always uh, difficult to start after lunch. <laughs> so uh, I have uh, good news first for you. Uh, because I, uh, two days ago, I went to the, uh, the DS Award. There's a cocktail. I was very lucky. I won the drawing. Uh, the winning was a, a one and a half hour tour uh, on the vintage car. Uh, one and a half hour Paris tour. So I won, the tour, well, I won this uh, uh, drawing. And uh, they also told me that I can have three other friends come with me. So that's a good news. And uh, I've already have one friend, Laura, uh, who uh, asked me to be here. So she will be the first one. So I have two more seats. Uh, I guess after uh, my uh, talk, uh, whoever comes to me first, uh, the, the first two persons will have this uh, uh, also a luck I want to share with you guys. And uh, one half hour tour uh, starts tomorrow uh, at 11. So if the time is uh, convenient for you, uh, tomorrow 11, and uh, I can give you the detail later on. OK? <laughs> All right. OK, so now I think everybody uh, wakes up. Uh, today, uh, my talk, here's the topic. You can, you can see that. Uh, but I also want to uh, share a little bit uh, my personal experience. So I think I, I kind of play two roles here. First, I want to tell you uh, how the uh, technology and the travel industry in China, how it grows quickly and the company I work with, Tunio, and how we took advantage of that. But second, I think as a person, I also witnessed the growth of China uh, because I think my experience might be helpful uh, for you guys. Um, I actually uh, uh, went to college in the US and I worked in the US for 10 years, so I can understand how Western people work and think and live. And then I uh, went back to China in 2004 and I joined a, a big company. That time is not very big, but now it's very big. It's uh, Alibaba. So I worked for Alibaba for about eight years. I witnessed Alibaba a quick growth. And then later on, I left Alibaba. I joined a startup. And, uh, uh, but almost three years ago, I joined two new. Uh, the reason I think uh, I want to share you this experience because I think you guys want to come here to want to learn chi China. Right? So the first thing is you have to really know China. But I can tell you it's very difficult, even for me. OK, so I, I uh, study and work in the US and came back to China uh, uh, almost 12 years ago. I couldn't, I couldn't uh, adapt at first, but I uh, survived. And uh, after I left Alibaba, I joined Tu new. I find I still need to adapt. Uh, the world in China changed really fast. Uh, how fast? I think whatever I, whatever I talked at the presentation PPE today, it probably will be irrelevant tomorrow. So what I, what I tell you today uh, might be all wrong. Okay, so that's how fast China grows. Uh, the reason I think uh, I want to share you this is because uh, sometimes a lot of people uh, criticize you know, what Chinese travelers, uh, what their behavior, and how fast the Chinese company grow. I think uh, the reason is it's difficult to understand why they are going so fast. Uh, I think because they're uh, at still very young stage, China, right? I, I think China is like European 150 years ago, right? It's actually experienced the biggest uh, revolution. You know, 150 years ago, European is the industrial revolution, right? Uh, but China is the same thing now. It, it's really fast. And uh, even a lot of Chinese, uh, we already divided. There's a, there's a movie about it. It's called Old School versus New School. So uh, I'm kind of old school already. And the young people, uh, what they think is totally different. So I think that's why you have to uh, look at China in a different perspective, right? Uh, what I think. Uh, uh, the thing that helps helps me to cope with the daily daily difficulties is you have to kind of look beyond. You have to kind of think about what China will be in 10, 20 years, and you look from that point of view and see why China is uh, look like this now. So uh, let me first start with. 
how this works. Okay. First start with a, a kind of a comparison, behavior comparison between the Western people and the Chinese people, how, how, how we travel and how Western people travel. So I think you guys and I also did the same thing too. When you travel, you probably you book the airline ticket, right? And then you find a hotel. So that's normally what you do. And for example, if you uh, take a vacation and you come to Paris, you probably will find the, 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 the hotel you want, right? And you will stay here, you drink coffee, right? A lot of things. And uh, what I always say is it's, it's not like Chinese cannot afford coffee. It's they cannot afford time to drink the coffee. Uh, I think uh, I remember the panel. Somebody said, you know, China they, they, they will spend ten days to visit two countries, right? That's not normal. They visit three countries. <laughs> yeah, the most popular product uh, on our website is like a ten or thirteen days a trip to Italy, <coughs> France, and Switzerland three countries. So you have to really understand because uh, I used to think why they travel, they are so, so busy. But now I understand because I'm same thing. After I come here, I don't have time to, to drink coffee. And everybody is kind of uh, in a working mode because China is growing so fast. And everybody is anxious because if you don't work fast, there might be someone who will compete against you tomorrow. So you really have to fight. And uh, so people start going to this mall, and uh, so when they come to on, on, on the tour, really, they just visit the site, and they're not like you guys enjoying the coffee and the look, the view, the streets, right? So I think China is still not there, there yet. It probably will, will be there in five, ten years later, but today that's how most Chinese, even in China, same thing. If they go to another city to visit, very fast. So you have to understand how, how we, uh, Chinese people, do the travel. So when I say comparison, it's like when you, when you book only airline ticket and hotels, it's like you buy the standard product online. Like, for example, if you want to buy an iPhone, the newest iPhone, right? You choose the color, you choose the size, that's it. And then there's a price. And luckily for Apple, the price is the same everywhere, right? So you don't need to worry about price. But when you book the ticket in the hotel, same thing, right? So you, you pick your, your airline, you pick the flight, the date, so that's fixed. So the only thing difference is if you book from one side, and the other side might be different price. Right? If you book hotel, you go to booking.com or other places, same, same hotel for two nights, three nights, the difference is price. But what Chinese like is they like to book packages. Okay, so they, they want to throw everything in the packages. You have the flight, you have the you know the hotel, car, the local guy, even the lunch. Okay. So this is what uh, Tunyu does. We <coughs> offer packages. So this is all in Chinese. What it says is a, a 13, that's what I said, is 13 day France, Switzerland, Italy. And hotel is four to five stars. And you go to the mall. Uh, the, well, the key thing is the price here listed. It's one price contains all. Everything is in this, under this price. So that's what most Chinese like. Okay. And uh, uh, I think uh, uh, they talk, when they're talking about uh, the, uh, the panel, they said, you know, when Chinese come here, they, uh, we want to uh, have uh, maybe customized experience for them, right? I think uh, for a uh, very small percentage of Chinese, they do, like myself, I can appreciate to go to a very personalized places I choose, but for the majority, you know, it's different, even like shopping, right? I remember one, one uh, panelist said, you know, everybody goes to Lafayette, right? Well, why, why don't go to another place? And the same thing for me, like uh, my, on my uh, WeChat, my colleagues sent me a long list of shopping with the images because they, they buy those things. I don't know what it is, so I have to ask them, give me the picture. So I have a long list. 
and I go to the shop, I give them the list, they pick the thing for me, and they say like 30 minutes, six minutes, whatever, finish, that's it for me. It's, uh, but look at it the other ways. For myself, even I, I live in a Western country, and when I come here, if I don't have time, I, I, I don't know what to buy my phone for myself. For example, uh, yesterday, actually, it was my daughter's birthday. And uh, she's 13. I promised to buy some gift for her. But I still haven't figured out what to buy. <laughs> so if you guys have some good idea, <laughs> please let me know, OK? Because uh, I, I don't know, because if I go to Latvia, probably it's not the best place for her, right? Uh, but for the majority of Chinese, that, that's the way to go. You know, they, they just have a list. They prepare everything. They come here. So that's their task, that's their job to finish the shopping, okay. Um, now here I give you some of the figures. Uh, so this is uh, uh, about the, the size of the tourist market. It grows very fast, the total market. Uh, last year it reached uh, 73 US dollar, US dollar billion dollars. So that's how fast it grows. The good news for us, like two new and other OTAs, the internet penetration rate is very low. So last year, it only reached 11%. That means 10 travelers, out of 10 travelers, almost nine of them, they book offline. Only one book online. So it's a huge potential. The other thing is, um, so yeah. So, so, so to interrupt and ask a question. So sure. does it mean that because maybe and you say obviously that Western people and Chinese people we don't book you know holidays the same way. Um, does that mean that uh, still the power, the impact of offline travel agencies is still very strong in China? Is that what it means? Uh, yes. Uh, actually, because uh, if you look at the most of the travel, there the ages. Uh, older people are the right now is the majority, like uh, in the 50s, 60s, because uh, first they have the money and second they have the time. <coughs> okay, the young people, the 40s, the 30s, actually don't have the time. So they have the time. They are probably, right now is the biggest uh, the category. So, but they still like to uh, uh, book the travel offline. But, but the trend is actually grows very fast. You can see the, the percentage here, it grows. And especially in the first tier cities, a lot of uh, stores are closing. So it's domestic travel plus yes. international? Yes, both yes. Yeah, both, both <coughs> domestic and, and international. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And uh, uh, then we look at uh, uh, beyond the first tier cities. So here uh, you can see the color. Uh, the yellow ones those are the biggest three, most popular places. The the, the top one is the Beijing, the middle one is Shanghai, and the bottom one is Canton. So that, what it says is, in these three places, more than 10% of people travel outbound international lines. But for the rest of them, less than 10%. Okay, so that means there's a huge potential uh, for people who, who want to go abroad. Uh, but thanks for the, uh, the mobile, Actually, what we see is uh, five years ago, for people who live in the you know the, the countryside, in the, in the in the remote areas, they don't have access to the internet. Five years ago, but now everybody can access internet through 3G, 4G. So what they read on WeChat, the same thing I read on WeChat. So that's the power, the information. So I, they already know that uh, in China. If you go to Southeast Asia, it's cheaper than to, to uh, China. Sanya is a, a popular uh, island city. It's cheaper to, to go outside and stay in China. And that information wasn't available five years ago, but now everybody knows. So the mobile really helps. And because of this uh, fact, uh, Chunyu, we, we actually opened this is, uh, uh, I think, the last month's number. We have more than 170 local offices in China. This is, this is where we are. Because we realize there's a huge potential in China. And uh, for people who want to go to China, I definitely 
strongly suggest you look at not the, just the first tier cities, and, but the second, third, and even the fifth tier cities. And they have the buying power. They have the information now, but they don't have the product. Especially travel product, they don't have it. Okay. Uh, this number you guys probably already know that this, the last year China already have uh, 620 million uh, mobile users. Okay. Uh, I want to tell you a surprise, uh, surprising fact that uh, we two new started our uh, mobile strategy just two years ago. I joined two new in 2013. When I joined, the week, we don't have our app, we don't have our mobile traffic, nothing. End of 2013, Tunu has 0% traffic from mobile. But today, just two years later, 70% of orders coming from the mobile. Only 30% from PC. Okay, so uh, this is the power of the, the mobile growth in China. We were also surprised by ourselves. Yeah, because we thought people, uh, if you book just a hotel, it makes sense you book on, on, on an iPhone, on, on cell phone. <coughs> but if you want to book a package, you know, why do you want to go use the cell phone, right? The, the, the PC screen is bigger. But nevertheless, the, the, that, that's the result because people start to use uh, phone and phone are getting bigger and bigger now, right? And uh, here I want to show you some of the uh, mobile promotion we did may, may be helpful, but I think every company has their own strategy in China. Um, on the mobile side, basically, uh, right now we already have uh, over 500 million downloads uh, in apps. Okay. Uh, first, you do the mobile RCM. You probably already heard of it. But this is actually uh, very important in China because uh, on the PC side, uh, it's dominated by Baidu. Right? So the pricing of advertising online on the PC side is very, very expensive. But on the mobile side, it's, it's not dominated by one, one player. So it's a, 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 cheap, a lot cheaper and still some people are using the, the mobile's uh, HTML page, H5, H5 order, right? And uh, we can sh I can show you that uh, how successful compared to our competitors. The lower two lines are our competitors. Uh, we have uh, a much bigger percentage of e orders coming from the SEM, the mobile SEM. Okay. And second is the, the, the web promotion. So basically, we try to uh, occupy most of the browsers that have a place there. And that's how, that, that's, that's a Chinese thing, right? So you have to put your uh, icon uh, in the start page of a browser so people <coughs> might accidentally click on it. <laughs> but sometimes they, they, they won't click on it. But still, uh, your, your exposure is very important. You, you try to tell people that, okay, you're there. And uh, on the app promotion, uh, we, we actually, uh, very, very, uh, put a lot of uh, uh, resources on it, especially on the iOS. Because I think yesterday uh, somebody showed iOS, the buying power of people who are using the iPhone is, is much bigger than using the Android. And we find the same thing too. So we try to maintain our uh, uh, the list. So uh, here it says uh, we are regularly on the top 100 list in app. And uh, in the category, the travel category, we even made you the first first one uh, a few times. Okay, so here uh, that's where we we're on top first. Okay, and then uh, on Android, basically uh, you uh, again because Android has lots of markets in China. It's different than in the Western country. You have Google, right? Because Google is not in China, so. That's actually good news for us. <laughs> then you can diversify. You can find a lot of different places. There are so many um, Android markets, and you have to know them. And you have to uh, constantly compare their, their performance, ROI, and switch. So that's, that's what we do. 
and also uh, uh, offline you can work with uh, the cell phone companies to pre-install your app and that's also very important in China okay and then uh, oh, here's the same thing and then here uh, I want to show you very uh, surprising thing again I was talking to one of the, uh, the press uh, the left side is a, a old thing we did, it's called group chat. Uh, this is because uh, you know, chi in China a lot of people like to travel in group, right? Group travel. Mm -hmm. We also have a lot of group travel customers. So we built this uh, application to allow the people like 40 in, in, in one group, they can chat on the road and it's very uh, helpful for them to establish uh, their relationship. Uh, I think we even had the uh, Couples who met there and later on uh, becomes a real couple. Okay. The, on the right is a, a surprising for us. Uh, uh, it's a new thing. It's uh, for the, the young people, right? Uh, in China, we call it uh, uh, 90ho, 80ho, 70ho, means that you're born in 70s, 80s, or 90s. For the 90s, those people, they're they're in their 20s. We don't understand them, right? And uh, some of our colleagues they build this app. Called travel mate. What it does is, uh, uh, you know, maybe one one person said, "I want I want to go to Paris next week," uh, and they post on social network. I, who who want to come with me? They will invite people to travel with them. Okay, and that's something probably I won't do it, right? <laughs> I want to travel with my family. But young people, even girls, you know, they can invite boys to, to join with them. <laughs> and that thing we 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 launched last year, it actually took off. A lot of people start posting, so here actually are the real uh, snapshot of the, uh, this, this, uh, this new thing. So you really, in China, you have to understand even the younger people. And uh, uh, something, uh, some funny thing happened, and you have to really follow that. Okay. Uh, the previous was about the mobile, and then that next things I want to share with you is the, our marketing strategies. I think that's, uh, uh, from my point of view, I think Tuyu is very successful on marketing because now a lot of Chinese uh, people uh, know Tuyu, but uh, a few years ago, not a lot. Here is uh, one thing that can reflect our brand is the Baidu Index. So here you can see the line here. And then uh, we also uh, ask a third party to do some of the, uh, the data for us. So I remember uh, two years ago uh, when they first come, our brand awareness was lower than 5%. So you can, you can, you can see now our uh, brand awareness is already more than 20%. 20 20%. Okay, so uh, our branding uh, strategy definitely worked. And here are some of the uh, things that I want to uh, share with you. One is uh, we uh, try to find the popular shows, okay, uh, TV shows. Okay, you guys probably ask, uh, you know, why you want to work with TV shows? And shouldn't people uh, don't use TV anymore? They only watch internet? Yeah, that's right. That's because most people uh, don't watch TV doesn't mean that what they, the program they watch is something not on TV. So uh, when you invest in TV shows, they will keep broadcasting for you because when people watch TV, you get shown once. And then the young people they watch on the internet, they will still watch the same TV show. So your exposure will continue to grow. So, but you have to pick the good ones, right? So here are some of the very uh, big uh, TV shows we work with. And uh, here we also uh, cooperate with a uh, big brand. That's another, another strategy. And then in China, um, you guys probably heard the, the Alibaba's uh, W11, whatever they call right? So it's a festival, so uh, you, you, you buy everything one day. And we did the same thing. So. Uh, on um, March 23rd, we also create our own festival day. And that day, you try to uh, get a lot of discount on products uh, to attract the traffic. And that, that, that outflow is very uh, effective. Here are some of the numbers. 
And th this is uh, actually last year's number. Because uh, when I got the, uh, the, the PowerPoint, uh, it was before uh, March 23rd. This year, March 23rd, we actually broke a new record. We ourselves, in you know, one day, uh, uh, in Chinese uh, RMB, uh, it's about um, 130 million Chinese yuan in one day. So we, we, broke, we broke the new record. And uh, the last thing about the strategy is so we actually have our own video content. And it's uh, on the left thing, it's called Lao Yu Tweetian. Lao Yu is our uh, CEO. So he actually put his, his name on the brand. Uh, what we did is uh, we have a uh, camera crew. They go to many uh, places like Europe and they uh, shoot the video. It's very professional. It's a film grade video. And then uh, we try to promote the destinations. And then we'll put the video online. And uh, uh, here we'll show you uh, how many, uh, it's already more than 35 million people view uh, a lot of our videos. So that's another way to promote yourself. Okay. Uh, ne next section, I want to uh, quickly give you an overview uh, uh, of my field because I'm a technology person. I think the technology did change the travel industry a lot. Uh, in several ways. First thing is uh, we actually invent this model called Air Plus Domestic Tour. Uh, here is how, how it works. It's, it's like a group travel. Uh, Chinese people like to, older people like group travel. But for the uh, traditional offline travel companies, uh, when you do group, group travel, you normally do this. You have uh, a group of 40 people, so you have to book hotel with 40 rooms, what we call the local operator, right? And the other side, you have to uh, kind of uh, book 40 seats on airplane, right? So you try to pre-book uh, 40 seats, maybe uh, in very discount rates. But the problem of that is uh, uh, the risk is very high. So you book airline 40 seats, you buy off the 40 seats, right? What if there's no, not enough people come, right? The second is, uh, they all come in one uh, group, which means, for example, they all live from Shanghai to Paris. So you have to collect 40 people from Shanghai to come to Paris. So it's difficult for, the, for, for them to do that like every day. It won't be every, every day 40 people come to Paris every day for one company. It's difficult. So what we did is, uh, because we're a technology company, uh, we can connect to a lot of the uh, airline GDS Okay, for example, in China, it's Zhonghangxin. Uh, uh, we can get the, what we call the, the regular uh, airline tickets, not through the group uh, tickets. So we combine the airline tickets with the local domestic operator tools, especially like in Europe, in Thailand, in a lot of countries. And uh, because we also have almost you know, 200 offices in China, so people can fly from everywhere. Mm -hmm. What we call is we, we form a group at the destination, not the origination. So 40 people coming from different Shanghai, Beijing, everywhere, they fly to Paris, they become group. And that's a lot easier. We can definitely get 40 people every day. So that makes two differences. Uh, for example, if you look at this, uh, it's all in Chinese, but uh, you can see that uh, this, the number of days, uh, can be changed. When you do the tr traditional way, when you uh, create a group travel, the day is prefixed, right? So I have 40 people live from Shanghai to Paris, they stay here eight days and come back. So you only have one option, eight days probably. Because we do these uh, combinations, you can stay as long as you want. And you can have a lot of combinations. And the second thing is uh, when they start look at the calendar, uh, in the previous page I showed you the package page, uh, we have this calendar. On the calendar, every day have a price and, and, and show you that it's available. 
So in the traditional way, when you create this group travel, because you, it's difficult to get 40 people, you probably only have this group uh, to you know, Shanghai to France once a week. So you open the calendar, you see it's almost blank, except you know, one month you have four, four days, uh, you have the price and everything else is blank. But with this one, you open the calendar, every day you have the price, so it's full. You can, you can leave any day, you can come back any day, but you still join the local group. Because the, uh, the mm. local operator in, for example, in Europe, mm. is also now very advanced. They can pick up passenger every day at the airport. They have the bus. So we actually kind of invent this uh, uh, the model. And also this model work, work, work in China. This uh, page actually is a Chinese destination. And uh, we compete with the Chinese local travel agent. And uh, uh, surprising result, uh, last year we find our Chinese travel pack the price. In China overall, group travel, the price keep, keeps going down. But for us, the price actually went up last year because we did these unique things and it's hard for them to compete. Okay, so one is the uh, Air, Air Plus domestic package. Second is uh, kind of an extension of that is uh, because we can do uh, Air Plus domestic, we can do anything combination. So we call it dynamic packaging. And that technology actually is uh, already uh, a lot of uh, companies in Europe and other countries, they are also developing the same technology. So that's not new, but I think it's actually uh, pretty new in China. So we use this one to allow people to basically still buy the package, but kind of like you can customize your package. Okay, so we call it an air package. You can choose your airline, your hotel, your, your ticket. The third thing is uh, to what to you did actually since I joined the company is uh, uh, the previous two things they show you is kind of, uh, it's only the, the outside of what you can see. But inside of 2NU, underlying it is basically, it's a, a new supply chain management. Uh, first is a, a technology, second is a process. And that thing is actually uh, almost not exist in China. Most of the Chinese travel agencies, they don't have a, a system, systematic ways to produce the travel product. So we have this kind of a, a it's like a retail model. So if you're in a retail business, you have to have a supply chain system. So that's why like a company here, like SAP, you know, they have a list of like 100, 200 products that you can buy, you know, the one, one is help you to op optimize this, the other uh, help you to optimize that. So they have a very detailed things in the retail industry. Retail is actually an old industry, right? It's probably more than 100 years. But travel industry, I don't know why, they don't use this method. And we start to use it. And because our sales are big enough to support this one. For the traditional travel company, I think uh, the problem is uh, the, the sales amount is too small. It's difficult to, uh, to use this model. Okay. All right, so uh, that kind of uh, summarized uh, you know, what the two new model here. Uh, again, give you a quick, uh, tell you the, the <coughs> ecosystem of the Chinese uh, tourist industry. On the left side is the suppliers. So basically, people who provide the hotel, rental car, meals, whatever, we call it suppliers. And then the middle one on the top is the B2B. Some big company will uh, kind of uh, become a distributor. They will get the resource from suppliers and sell to the right side. And the bottom is the travel agency, uh, similar. Then is the B2C, online B2C. You can see it's actually a lot of companies in online B2C and we're there also. On the rightmost side is the content, where a lot of pe Chinese people will first do the research of you know, the, how they gonna play in Paris, uh, what to stay, where to stay, uh, what to eat. So content sharing is on the right side. So here is a, the ecosystem, and uh, we are the, the, the biggest uh, travel uh, online travel company in China, Leisure. And this year, uh, we also start the second our strategy is going international. Uh, we're going to open 33 offices international wise. 
we already have uh, about almost 10 already. So we're probably going to open up a, a Paris office next month here. And uh, the reason we try to open up offices here is uh, we want to work with the suppliers. You guys remember the, the model I showed you, the ecosystem on the left side is the suppliers. So a lot of suppliers inter international-wise are international companies like European, it's a European hotel, European uh, local operators. We want to work with them directly. Previously, we, we didn't. We had to work with another company indirectly and then as a distributor. Now we want to work with directly. So that's the strategy. And to help to, uh, to make the strategy work, we developed this tool called Unbooking. Uh, the tool is allow the uh, suppliers here, you know, in Europe, we have the English version, we don't have the French version yet, uh, we have the English version, you can first upload your resource onto our platform. For example, you have a hotel, you have a restaurant, whatever, here you sell. You can upload your product into our platform. And then it will integrate with our other systems. And then when somebody book, for example, a hotel, it will send you a confirmation. And then you can use this unbooking tool to confirm. Okay, so basically uh, we have uh, uh, many ways to allow you to, if, if you have an uh, API, if you're a big company have API, you can connect with our API. Uh, if you don't have, uh, you can use our website directly, or you can use the app. So we have many ways, and uh, here are some things you, uh, here are categories, basically just a list, list, list of the category, but virtually everything can be in the system. And you can use that to do a lot of uh, travel related things, uh, like uh, what I said, uh, reservation, confirmation, uh, even the following up a uh, complaint. So here is the, the model. Okay, so that's basically uh, my topic today. And, uh